Hey guys, how's it going? It's your boy Alex, and welcome to the rodeo. We're back it again. I have a first time guest in the building. No cap. The one, the only, Little Caesar Hands. No cap. How hey. you doing? How you doing? Bro, I'm chilling, bro. Little Caesar chilling, Hands. Bro. Chilling, bro. Let's let's start with the name, bro. Why Little Caesar Hands? Okay, look, bro. I was watching a movie, bro, and the nigga like his dad died, and nigga wasn't like complete because he was a fucking like he wasn't a real human. Like he could wait. What movie? Edward Scissorhands. Oh, the actual. Oh. So I was watching that. I'm like, hold on, bro. I feel like this nigga, besides like the cutting grass and doing niggas hair and shit. Like who he is as a. Hell oh. yeah, bro. So I was like, you know what, bro? Because my name before, bro, that shit was fucking, bro. I bet you can't guess it, bro. Uh, it, something crazy. Bro, it was Handy Manny, bro. Ah, thank God you switched it. <laughs> <laughs> bro Thank oh, god no, he bro. switched it What the hell Hey but this shit hard though Like nah. it's stuck bro Little scissor hands Little babe. scissor hands That shit's hard That's unique bro And the meaning behind it is crazy Cause you know You you just think like Oh it's maybe the movie This and that But like you said Him having that impact You know as a person And who he was The way he moved And stuff like that Hell yeah You related to that Hell yeah Shit bro So you know First time here We're gonna get into everything Yeah Um, You're from Atlanta right for First sure. guest from Atlanta, you For know. Appreciate sure. you making the the fly or flight yeah, over know here. I had to do it, man. No cap. No um, cap. So talk to me about you know where you from, bro. Like how was it growing up in Atlanta and stuff like that, nigga? No cap. I went to like almost like a new school every year. Oh, so you were moving, bro, a lot, bro. So that's where I covered like the main bases of Georgia, like. I don't really say I'm from one place because I was, like, moved to so many different ones. But, like, if I had to claim, bro, I claim Clayco, bro. Like, Clayco. Clayco's were, like, nigga, nigga, that's me. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I just claim Clayco, but. Why did you guys move so much? Because, bro, I don't know, bro. Growing up shit, bro. Mom's, mom's had to do what she had to do, bro. I don't mm. know. I don't really know. Probably um, better opportunities, right, in certain areas and stuff. Mm, Maybe. <laughs> nah, bro. I don't know, bro. Mm. Both no. parents or just dad's on the other side. Dad's always been dad. Dad, he was he's always been over there. I yeah. used to. I live with. Matter of fact, bro. Like this is how I went, bro. So I live with, I live with my mom, and then I went with my grandma, and then oh shit. Oh, you good, you good. And then um, then I went with my dad. I graduated, and now I'm like, bro, hell yeah, bro. So basically, that's, but I like um, them, bro. Hold on, I just got stuck. <laughs> Hold on, bro. <laughs> now, but how was it for you as a kid moving so much? Because, you know, for for you know for me as a kid, it's like, damn, having my friends, you know, I know my friends are always going to be there type shit. But for you, was it like, did you make a lot of friends? Um, were you always just to yourself? You know, with uh, moving around so much, it kind of takes a toll on as a kid. Hell yeah. You know, how would how would you describe your childhood? Bro, my childhood was fun, bro. I was bad as fuck, bro. I had like more, <laughs> nigga, what? Nigga, I was fucking more of a gangster thug, whatever, than I, would, I am now, bro. I was really yeah. like going in the store, nigga. And I know this is bad, bro, but I was going in the store, nigga, walking out that bitch with, like, five packs of lemon heads, but walked in there with yeah. no money. Shit. Gotta get it either way. <laughs> then one day, that nigga called me. He was like, hey, man, uh, yeah. this is my store. You stealing? I was like, fuck, bro. I was like, yeah, I'm changing, bro. Yeah. So, but then I'm, so after that, I went to McDonough. It's like Henry County, which is like the country. mm where multiple like it was a lot of white people bro and for me bro like i just fuck with diver diversity like as far as like the races and shit like yeah like a wide spread of like multiple races I, I don't just fuck with like one single race as far as me being around that like i want to see a mixture bro so and when i went to mcdonough like i met like a whole bunch of white people bro and that's when i had went hollywood bro it switched you up? That shit switched me up, bro. Like, so you came from, you know, a little bit like more like like you said, you were wilding out a little little thug type shit to now with the, the white folks. And that they it changed you as a person. 
bro, that shit made me want want to be more. No, that shit like it like let me know my worth type shit. Cause like, bro, them niggas got nice cars. I want mm-hmm. a nice car. Uh, them niggas making why 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 they have like the new phone before the phone? What the fuck, nigga? Yeah. I still got a droid. No, no, bro. So I was like, you know what? And then like. Everything was just good, bro. Like, um, it was just it was just better. Like, I like I like that whole time. Even though a nigga was, bro. Like, bro, I'm a real rock star, bro. Niggas be depressed, bro. But like, so I was depressed, but I was like, yeah, this shit far. And then I went back to the hood, bro. Mm. Back to the. How hood. old were you whenever you went from, uh, you know, living with the white folks? Now back to the hood. Bruh, that was like when I was fifteen. Mm. So then, like, and we and my dad, he lived in a great neighborhood. It was great, but yeah. it was just school was ghetto, bro. And like, I don't, I didn't fuck with that, bro. But I met people there that like don't do my niggas, bro. Like, even shout, till this day, you're still, bro. Shout out that nigga XO Tree, nigga. That nigga make music too, and nigga hard mm-hmm. and money and. Louise and Nathan, bro, it's a whole bunch of niggas, but yeah. that's it. That's all about that. So now I just graduated not too long ago. Mm-hmm. So, so that's it. Now I'm just trying to blow the fuck up, bro. Let's go. Okay. So you know, what what uh likes did you have as a kid, or when did the music actually come about? Because lots of people they'll be making songs here and there whenever they're young, or they'd be freestyling with the friends and this and that. When for you, when did the music actually start being a a good thing for you, bro? Like I've listened to music my whole life, right? Yeah. So I could like mimic every song on the radio, like dead ass. Like I did that oh, shit. Oh, okay. So one day, nigga, my mom, bro, my stepdad, bro, this nigga's like he makes beats and shit, and he engineers and. That whole shit So One day he was Doing that shit And I just kept Saying this shit To a beat And and he was like Record that shit And I did bro That shit was called Hit him with the snipe On my bike No cap I was nine years old bro. That <laughs> I was about shit, to say How old were you nine That shit was a fucking hit bro That was right around the time Ray Shrimmer and them Oh uh, yeah I yeah. sounded just like the them niggas, No flex so- I swear <laughs> to god bro, yeah. No cap bro. No cap For real bro But Ever since then, and then, so when I was in McDonald's with my grandma, then that's when I started, like, you know what, bro? I'm just finna rap. Because, like, mm-hmm. that was before I knew about the underground, like, still learning shit about the, the underground and shit. But so I started recording then oh. off the headphones on my iPhone off GarageBand, bro. And I just thought I was so far, bro. <laughs> now I look back, I'm like, bro, I was yeah. so ass, bro. But them niggas fucked with me, bro. Yeah. I mean, I feel like, you know, that's that's what most artists do go through. You know, you look back on your music and you got to start somewhere type shit. Hell so yeah. that's how it goes. Um, who would you say would be like your top three musical inspirations growing up? Definitely Michael Jackson. And oh, then shit. Um, I fuck with Phil Collins. Mm. But it's not... Damn, bro. It's not no top, bro. Cause like, you know how each like three years your music selection Just, may yeah. change. Like, like may change. Like, um, that's how it was with me. So, like, it was just favorites every three months type shit, and it would mm-hmm. be all different genres. Like, bro, I fuck with everything, bro. Mm. So, so you're not the type of person that just like sticks to one genre. And just that's kind of what I fuck with, and that's it. Nah, you like to explore around and. But I'm not gonna cap though. Like some of this, like, like I can't like this hood music, bro. I don't like hood music no more, bro. Like, mm. I mean that shit do be like. I mean it bangs, but. <laughs> yeah, I just can't. I just can't see how niggas listen to that shit all the time, yeah. bro. I just like that rock star shit. I just like rock star shit now, like. Uh-huh. I listen to everything, nigga, like reggae, nigga, 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 fucking everything, nigga, rock music, rap music, nigga, techno, nigga, some other weird shit, bruh, that shit is all fire, bruh, but mm-hmm. like, that's just NBA young boy shit. Why be better? <laughs> <laughs> 
bro, what the fuck? Random niggas be trolling in the comments. No, but that's a good point of like, you know, exploring all the all the different types of music because that's kind of how we get into evolving the scene, you know? Um, you could bring a little bit from the techno, from the reggae, from everything, and you start making new sounds, building a whole different wave. Hell yeah. Uh, we saw like, uh, you know, Lil Peep, uh, we saw, um, you know, Playboy Cardi, Uzi, all them, they're... They take a little bit from different areas than instead of just sticking to the typical rap music. Um, and that's that's the best way to evolve. Yeah, for sure. For uh, sure. How did your friends and family take take uh, you making music now serious? You know, it, it's different whenever you, you tell everybody like, oh, it's just kind of I'm just playing with it, this and that. But now it's like, bro, this is this is a dream. This is a, a, a career that now I, I want to take serious. How did they take that? They they fuck with it, bro. My mom be my biggest fan, bro. She mm. be playing my shit to her like there her, go. her little Uber customers. <laughs> there we go. And you know my dad fucks with it, and bro, I'm trying to hide that shit from my grandparents, bro. Like oh for real. My grandma asked me. She was like, "What's your rap name?" I <laughs> I ain't say shit back, bro. Uh, bro, I don't want them to hear my. That shit just make me feel weird. That's like yeah, me going to perform. In front of niggas that are like 30 and up. I see mm. nobody like me. That shit just makes me like, what the fuck? Nah, yeah. I can't do it, bro. Yeah, and I feel like the the older you get, it might be a different way, like you said. You know, um, right now, this is this is who you are right now. Hell yeah. Um, so, you know, you get into the music. You start taking it serious. Um, for you, what what do you think would be the next thing you have to do to get you to that next level? Because it's different from being just... A local artist to a regional artist to now being global what do you think you have to do as an artist to get you to that next level i have to start being seen more type shit like mm. being around different events different sceneries like networking networking bro i bro, like i've been networking for a minute like bro but that's it like i got some accomplishments too like yeah nigga niggas niggas be on soundcloud every day making music and shit Nigga, they invited me to their shit, bro. I don't even know how, but I got invited to that shit, and they posted a nigga on their page and shit, bro. I fuck with SoundCloud, bro. Yeah. So that was like an accomplishment for me, cause like That's major. niggas with niggas don't niggas don't expect to be invited to some shit by SoundCloud and then followed by the SoundCloud people all day. They they're talking to you. That shit's cool, bro. Like, oh no, but. What are your thoughts on that? How like people now kind of diss the whole SoundCloud movement, you know, in the in the way that you know how it, it literally launched so many careers, right? right. But now people kind of downplay it because of the whole streaming and this and that. Now, now it's like, how much do you stream? Type shit. Uh, what are your thoughts with that? As someone who who sees a lot of good things happening with SoundCloud, a hit is a hit, bro. <laughs> If the nigga don't got it, the nigga paying. Look, bro, everybody has paid for streams and followers and all that shit. Everybody, bro. Even if you didn't know that's what you were doing, it happened, bro. So that shit ain't going to stop. Um, the, the, the SoundCloud, most of them niggas, most of the artists that niggas listen to, bro, and they fuck with, bro, that are hard, they scam. They, mm. they, they scam. They scam niggas out of features, out a whole bunch of shit. You listen to that nigga every day, bro. You guys get scammed by him. Shit fucked up, bro. That shit's fucked up. Do you feel like we, we'll ever get another wave how we saw in, like, 2016 with, you know, you, you had, like, Post, Uzi, um, Lil Peep, all these different uh, artists that just burst through the scene through the whole SoundCloud wave? Bro, I think that... We won't, it won't be like that anymore because now they're leading into more of a electronic type, uh. like, basically they're trying to, they're trying to make Elon, like, Elon Musk, like, music, bro, like. <laughs> that boy, you seen his dancing moves? <laughs> bro, that boy right there. Bro, what bro. the fuck, bro, that nigga <laughs> seemed cool as fuck, bro. Oh, yeah. But. He made, trying me, to, he made me a lot of money with that <laughs> Tesla stock, bro. Hey, man. I want a fucking Tesla. Bro, I'm going to get a fucking Tesla, bro. bro. But, yeah, I get what you're saying about, like, I feel like also with, with SoundCloud, because it's, it's uh, you know, heavy in Europe, that wave is there. 
Hell you know, they yeah. love the whole dancing, having a good time. Hell yeah. Uh, electric, techno, um, pop, popish. Hell yeah. Um, so I, I get what you're saying about like now the shift is kind of, you know, going to that wave. Hell yeah. Like, like, bro, I don't, I don't like the happy shit though. Like, <laughs> that happy music be so weird, bro. I just can't get jiggy with that shit, bro. Like, and nigga, why are you so happy? <laughs> Brett, no cap. Like, <laughs> yeah. But I don't know, like, it's good they can make happy music, bro, because a lot of niggas can't. I know I can't. I can't mm. make happy music, bro. My shit is for, like, nigga, you want to turn up. Nigga, you want to think. Nigga, you want to astro project by just listening to music. Nigga, listen to me, bro. My shit, because my shit, the reason, like, I separate myself from everybody else is because my shit, like, when I first started rapping, I didn't want none of my music mixed, bro. Niggas were really forcing me to get my shit mixed, bro. But I just felt like when Raw you mix it. Raw and authentic? It, yeah, that's how I wanted to be. Like, because this shit ain't out. I didn't want to fake. I felt like mixing shit was, f like, faking. Mm. Like, because that's not you once the song is mixed. Yeah. So, like, nigga, you need all that background noise and all that other shit. That That's you, nigga. Yeah. When you take that shit, that that's what you want, man. I don't know. But hey man. <laughs> that's why they say that because you know, sometimes I'll be doing the, the live performances and it seems like lots of the artists they feel like not so confident in their own voice and they'll rather just want the song over. Right. And you see the difference between an artist that like, you know, has that confidence within their skills, you know, whether it be rapping or singing, mm. and somebody who's, like you said, is just carried b by the track with the mixing and all the editing, all the sound, Hell perfecting yeah. all that. You know, it's like completely two different sounds, honestly. That shit's crazy, bro. Um, shit's so crazy. for you, uh, a segment that I have here is showcasing the artist's music. Mm -hmm. uh, what is a song that you would love to showcase for the people to, to listen who have maybe not, not heard the music, but uh, it would make them a fan? Hey man, say man, this little scissor hands, nigga. You listening to Dracula? Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like that. Man, so that was Dracula. How did that song song come about? Like, how did you, you know, get the idea? Was it just like I'm not even gonna cap to you, bro. I think I wanted like a vape, bro. But the vapes at the store were ass, bro. So I was just <laughs> mad as fuck. Bro. I went home and made Dracula, bro. And that's just the vape was the one that inspired. <laughs> fuck them, bro. Like, bro, who the fuck, bro? They had a fake ass Kang vape in there. That shit has Superman on it. That's not what Kang vapes look like, bro. Yeah. Damn. That's how, so. That's how you get your inspiration. Or how do you make your, your music? Is it just like day-to-day -day stuff? Is it okay. personal stuff? When I first started, I used to write. Then I started freestyling, and then I was on some trap shit. I was a trap rapper, music yeah. I don't like anymore. I was a trap rapper, and shit was hard. And then I noticed where the music was going, and it was like a lot of that electronic shit. And I can, I can do that shit all day. So I was like, you know what, bro? I'm going to just get high as fuck. Every song that I do, I'm high as fuck. I, I don't, bro, nigga. Bro, that shit be hard, though. Like, I be really making hits. High Man, as that's fuck. crazy that you could do that, bro, because whenever I get high as fuck, I can't do shit, bro. I'm slumped right there. Just Nah, you put me in front of people, I can't do shit, bro. I'm oh. a bitch out, bro. But, like, like, musically, you're just there. Hell yeah, bro. Like, bro. 
that's just crazy bro it's crazy damn that that's dope though because sometimes do you feel like now you've got to the point that you need to be high to make that type of music or are you able to make it you know just i can make that shit unhigh but i like to be high because i don't know what the fuck is going on so uh. when you get a hard ass beat and you don't know what the fuck is going on that's yeah. just going to be a hit there's no better way to put if you can't like 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 bro like basically all my music is like hard ass beats like i don't choose no soft weak yeah. ass beat like the beat hard that shit's a hit regardless of what you say when i rap i don't i'm not lyrical i'm poetic but like i'm poetic with I could be poetic with the ad libs. This is the way I say them. And my music is kind of in a chant. Like, I'm chanting. Like, yeah. I cast spells in my music. So, like, I say it. Re I keep repeating shit or I say shit. You just got to know, bro. And you just got this, you know, after uh, playing with it and being high? Or was it just, like, you had this idea, like, I want my music to be this way? Yeah, I want my music to be that way. Because, mm. like, I'll be listening to these, like, different people every day, bro. And like, I'm just hard, bro. I'm fine. Yeah. I'm fine, bro. Like, you're gonna like if you listen to me and be like, I don't like this song, and you listen to the next one, you're you're definitely gonna like that song, cause like, I'm just I'm just like that, bro. And we were talking pretty much while the song was playing. How, you know, I feel like just listening to this, it doesn't do it justice. Right. This is more like a performance type, you know, you, the energy has to be crazy. And with even with like Playboy Cardi or like sometimes little, some of Lil Uzi's songs, like it's more like concert slash performance type music. Uh, do you agree with that? Do you disagree with that? What are your thoughts on that? I agree, With bro. your music. I agree, bro. My music, I, w I want to start like performing more so I make more music that I know people are not just gonna be sitting there falling out no bro i want to in the pit bro like turning up turning up looking Hell like yeah. fishes out of water bro <laughs> for real no cap what really keeps you motivated to keep going uh, especially as new artists i feel like lots of artists like they come and go and sometimes the motivation of not getting to where they want to be or uh not seeing the the monetary income from it uh what keeps you motivated to to even keep going as an artist hearing more music mm. hearing, seeing new artists make it out that's all that's that's what keeps me moving i'm like mm -hmm. damn bro i swear to god i seen that nigga at qt and there he is now Psh, booming crazy that's just crazy but that, that's what you need dude especially with the the days that you just don't want to do shit you know hell yeah like bro. those days that you're just like bro fuck this shit bro let, let me just go chill let me oh, just go god, relax bro like Bro, nigga, bro, real, real talk, bro. Shout out to my nigga, my nigga Icy, my nigga, my nigga Jace, my nigga, uh, for what, bro? For with Tyler, um, my nigga Rich, uh, my nigga Penthouse, uh, it's way more niggas, bro, but the whole team hell supporting, yeah, bro. What would you say is, is your favorite track you've done up to this point that you look back on and you're just like, Damn, that was, that was a masterpiece type shit. It has to be Dracula, bro. Because if you hear that shit and you're super fucked up, the way it sounds is like, bro, I'm really talking to you, bro. Like, you'll see, bro. Like, yeah, that shit's hard, bro. I mean, I should do that, like, you know, hearing it now, and then I need to get fucked up, fucked up, bro. And you're going to be fucked up. You're going you're gonna, like, to right. be thinking you seeing shit. You're going to be thinking <laughs> shit behind you. Bro, that shit's hard. Damn. Uh, so you know you've released a lot of music mm -hmm. um what do you have planned moving forward you know it's already december 2021 uh what do you plan moving forward is do, do we get a mixtape or album ep is it uh more singles is it music videos what are your plans more music videos more shows um probably i probably I drop sing. I'll be bipolar with the single, so like I I might drop a single or something soon. Do you let more like the the community select the singles? Sometimes artists be doing that, like they just drop stuff and whichever the people gravitate towards, that's kind of the single now. I used to do that shit. Now I just be giving and going, bro. 
Mm. Just be giving and going, bro. I drop everything when you all when you come back and look at it like a month later. Like all those snippets we like, they're all out. They be out. I I, I already know like what to do, like as far as to work with the crowd and shit. But, like I had got I had got like hacked, bro, like Ah, oh, damn. So I'm fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> nah, bro, but not really, but yeah. that shit is a bummer. Niggas that sit home and just scam. How they get you? Bro, the Was it like your a social media account or Hell yeah, you you know exactly what it was. You post a picture and it says, Bro, 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 I yeah. see potential DM me. You know exactly uh, I know man. you see those, bro. Yeah, man. Shit's weird. Those motherfuckers be capping hard, bro. Hard They be bro. trying to get anybody and everybody with that shit. You know, it's like, crazy, bro. What happened? That nigga's in Texas, bro. <laughs> Damn. I would have thought that would be somewhere completely. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, how has 2021 been for you? You know, th- we're getting to the end of the year. Um, how did it start? How did it go? Bro, this has been good. It yeah, has been good, bro. I was on the SoundCloud page. Uh, um, slowly, but like surely rising. Um, niggas are starting to notice. Um uh niggas that niggas that nigga listen to way back when they text a nigga now like like they they hit a nigga up you want to do features and this this that that shit is all motivation to just keep going bro if you a rapper and nigga the fan like you don't got you don't have a fan base bro don't buy followers bro you just got to go outside nigga you go outside, and you're going to see another face that does the same thing you do and knows the same people you listen to. Just go outside. Facts. That's all you got to do. You want to you know how to make it, bro. You can't do it from your from your bedroom, from the computer. Go outside, bro. That's facts right there because I've seen so many, like, shows locally here that, you know, some, some artists, they'll have, like, you know, 1,000, 2,000 followers, and, you know, they'll bring the whole team bro the whole crowd and then you see all the motherfuckers that have 15 20k nobody followers nobody, nobody really shows up like nobody that. and like you said you know the organic growth that's what you really need and you got to do that by networking by you know linking up with people that fuck with you and, and you know that just builds on like a snowball effect Hell um yeah. and i've seen it firsthand literally you know the the concerts i go to sometimes it's like damn i thought this shit was gonna be fucking live fucking lit right dead that i said i've been there for some dead performances too like my first performance bro that shit was so crazy like nobody had phone no there's no footage that's how rare it was like niggas yeah. were just staring at me bro. like like but it wasn't a oh this shit ass or oh what the fuck is he talking about niggas is just hypnotized by the drip bro because look bro like this bro when you make a song can't think too much on it, bro. Cause then, cause then, like, it's not a hit, bro. Mm. You think you think about a song too much, it's not a hit. And that all, uh, I just said all that just to say that. <laughs> I feel like that, that's that's with anything in life. Sometimes whenever you add too much pressure to yourself, it's just like, you know, you have those hopes and stuff, and then if it doesn't reach that that yeah. level that you were expecting. Mm-hmm. It's it's you see it as an L for you, but in reality you can't put that you know you, you can't at the end of the day like for you to even do the the song you know and execute correctly, lots of people ain't doing that shit, bro. That's that's still a win, right? Like I'll be seeing niggas in the studio take like eight hours for one hook, bro. That shit <laughs> yeah. is crazy, bro. Like nigga, nigga, my shit sounds like that, and I do that shit off of a phone. <laughs> and it only takes me an hour to make nine songs, bro. Like, what are you doing? Golly. Yeah, I, that's it. Uh, so, you know, being from Atlanta for you, it's a whole different wave over there compared to, you know, uh, here in Dallas. We talked about how off camera we talked about, you know, what what uh, stage is Dallas in? And I was like, bro, it's right now it's literally like everybody beefed up. Right. It's like the Gucci, Jeezy, T.I. type stuff. 
compared to now Atlanta is like everybody fucks with each other type shit. Right. Um, from you actually being there, what is your thoughts, you know, about the wave there in Atlanta and, you know, what can we do here in Dallas to get us to that next level? Um, how you guys have been killing it for years. Atlanta is hood niggas, weird niggas, scammer niggas, and mama's boys, bro. Those are the <laughs> four types. You fall into one of those. <laughs> that's that's how it goes. And and the way I see it in Texas, y'all should support more of the weird niggas. Mm. Like you see how. A uh, Goyeo or somebody could get like, the, you know, he his whole community or whatever fucked with him. Yeah. The whole community should fuck with the weird niggas too. The weird niggas make more money because yeah. they're weird. If you're a hood rapper nigga, you're a one hood rapper nigga. If you're a weird nigga, nobody knows what one you are because you're weird. You're mm. it's multiple in you, so. Weird niggas, the weird niggas, bro. Weird niggas is where the world is going to. Do you feel like why? Why do you think it's hard for us to, to gravitate and, and push somebody who's a little bit more different with their music compared to like the typical, uh, hip hop and gangster hip hop or hood? I don't know, cause Travis made it. Yeah. I don't know why, but it's only been Travis. Like, I'm pretty sure there's more people. Nah, I don't know. I was. I don't know too many more weird niggas coming out of Texas. Like, Atlanta is so many weird niggas. Like, it's so weird in Atlanta, but hood and thug niggas are weird too. How did you guys get to that level of, like, accepting the weird dudes? Because I feel like we're still kind of like the old school way of, like, you know, if you're not gangster and repping like that. Yeah. Is it because the the different or, or weird people now, like you said, are making the money too? Or how did you guys get to that point of accepting those people as well? I don't know, bro, because to me it just happened. I know I went through phases like everybody does, but yeah. so I went through phases and I got weird. I wasn't always weird. I just, like, after middle school, I just got weird. So I was just weird. And in Atlanta, I guess it goes by like the stages of when you're a kid to when you're an adult like Mm. because you can go through all phases and still end up a hood nigga or a scammer or or a weird nigga but yeah it's just i don't know but i really i I feel like here in dallas we kind of don't have the community behind it like you said um because you mentioned travis and you know even before our interview i was telling telling you about uh houston artists that came through Mm -hmm. and with them like i see the the like you know connected and like okay somebody's popping now this person's popping okay now everybody let's work together to build up you know houston music you know travis he reps houston hard mm-hmm. meg she reps houston hard oh, it's no. because they have that community behind them and i feel like here in dallas we haven't got to that point where we accept everybody mm-hmm. so it's kind of just like you know whoever is popping here we'll just get behind them and whoever else is trying to pop fuck them you know right and it, it's it's been hard to like break that that uh that trend and you know hopefully we we break it with hell the next yeah. generation hell yeah bro that's just about to change really soon you know it changes like music yeah. changes every four years so where do you see music going more of that more of this like electronic sound and more it's gonna speed up the music is gonna speed up if you go back and listen to old music and listen to new mm-hmm. music. The new music is much faster paced. It's only gonna speed up because niggas' attention spans are really bad, so it has to be fast and it has to be short. Mm-hmm. Which is another reason why I make all my songs so like short, but quick to the point. To straight to the point, bro. Gotcha. But I don't know. It's just gonna go in there like a more of a Elon Musk way. <laughs> I swear I'm gonna keep saying that because like you know how that nigga's trying to make like. Elevators to the f- to fucking Jupiter, nigga. That motherfucker trying to get the fuck out of here for sure. <laughs> They're trying to make elevators to Jupiter within music right now. Yeah, so that's how I feel about that. It's just it's all gonna speed up and sound more electronic, like cars starting up type shit. For real. 
what do you what do you think about like um some artists have been talking about how you know atlanta what? has been dominating but now there's there's kind of a, a new wave of like either detroit or memphis trying to take over what are your thoughts being somebody who's an artist from atlanta you know and hearing people talk about that like Oh yeah, you guys have been king for 10, 15 years. Now it's our turn. You know, do you see it happening? Do you What do you think? I mean, everybody can shine, bro, but like will they? I don't I don't yeah. know. I still think Atlanta's still running shit, bro, cuz it's yeah. just like everybody's connected out there like I've seen the same group of niggas like three times at three events like and that's it. That's how it is with everybody, bro. So it's like everybody knows everybody, bro. So if you, and I feel like with the Atlanta, it's not just the music, right? It's like, not. It's the the vibe there, is the culture there. Right. Uh, people have talked about how, like, you know, even black businesses they boom over there because it's like the sw- the support is there, and you know, with music, I feel like that's also an extension of the city, and um, yeah. you know, it's hard to beat that. It's hard to beat that, bro. Like, you can't beat that. Like, yeah. That's it. You can't beat that, bro. Currently, are you signed or or do you plan on signing? Bro, I want to sign, bro. It's only one nigga I was signed to, bro. Who? Like, as far as a rapper, I'd only sign a Cardi, bro. But labels, I don't know, bro. I don't know, but I would have to like. It would. It wouldn't be like a. I don't want like a, a deal where they're like you're right up under them, like. Mm. Like. Either one for like distribution, or I might even fuck around and try to get signed through DistroKid or United Masters before I label. I have seen United, cause that's how I got. I think you also even Empire has yep. been uh, giving people Wait, their masters. Well, I'm scared, bro. Nah, Empire, oh yeah, I'm scared. <laughs> nah, I don't know about Empire, bro. But. <laughs> But nah, the bro. deals are good, but I don't know about everything else that comes with Cause it. Cause <laughs> them niggas be dying, bro. That's like that's crazy. Sad. And they all died in what was it? Like twenty no, this, this November. Year, it was the same month November, for five right? niggas. That's just rest in peace. That's you know, just big scary. one for us was Mo Three here in Dallas. For yeah, real. That's, I feel like he was gonna take us to the next level too. He you was know, hard. Him, the versatility of singing and yep. rapping and and uh, he was actually talking about moving to Atlanta. Literally, Damn. you know, months before or like two months before that that happened. So Damn, bro. it's crazy. But he uh, was hard. Yeah, man. For Do you him. ever fear that the bigger that you get, being an artist, staying in the spot that you're from? Yeah, I would definitely leave. But I know me. I'm not a bad person. I don't have that shit coming to me. But you know, shit can come to anybody. So yeah. I would still leave. Like I probably, I'm not telling you niggas where I would go, but. <laughs> yeah. Nigga, I'm not gonna be in the U.S., bro. I w- oh shit! Cause you know most of my fans are not even over here. Yeah, they're foreign. They're, they're all foreign. Like, 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 like most of them are foreign. Like, I don't know why I have. That's just crazy, bro. Like niggas hit me up from India all the time, bro. That's the question I have. You know, for for you as an artist, how does it feel? Knowing these people from different places, bro. Some, sometimes they don't even speak the language. That's being crazy. fans of you, that's just crazy, bro. I, 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 bro. I just commend them for yeah. fucking with me, bro. Cause, you know, not everybody's gonna fuck with everybody, bro. So, yeah. I just. That's pretty wild, though, right? Hell like yeah. looking at, at the analytics and stuff. I got a, I got a friend, bro. She's from the UK, bro. Oh, the UK. That shit is crazy, bro. But yeah, like you said, I feel like you don't put that energy out there of like, I'm I'm the biggest thug. I, nah. I ain't scared of I'm anybody. Just, and no, nah, I don't. I'm just I'm just a rock star, but a uh, rock star that's quiet until you talk to that nigga and I talk your fucking head off. No cap. Yeah. No cap. Because I feel like sometimes as artists they be trying to like, ain't nobody could touch me type shit. Yeah, I don't want to be like that. That's I mean, bro. So for you, like you know, we're talking about how seeing those people folk with your music like that around the world and stuff like you know that's crazy to think about bro like you know motherfuckers don't even know the language they're over here just fucking with your music probably even like the bigger that you get they're gonna be like oh i was one of the the big supporters this and that hell yeah and that's that's dope of course i do have you know you from you're from atlanta how's the underground scene over there 
because we always hear about Atlanta and the the people that little babies Gunna and Young Thug. Hell yeah. But how's the underground up and coming artist scene over there? Bro, that shit is beautiful, bro. So so uh, much talent, bro. So much mysteriousness. So much nigga just art, bro. That shit's fire, bro. That shit's fire, like. Do you guys have like lots of shows, lot of lots of networking stuff? Every or? fucking week, bro. Mm. Every week, I try to make it to all of them, bro. I think I miss one, but it's cool, bro. I'm gonna catch another one, cause it's just bound to happen, bro. Like I'm telling you, bro. Real secret, bro. Real shit, bro. You wanna blow up, nigga? Just go outside, nigga. Go to those events, nigga. You're gonna meet people, bro. Mm -hmm. I swear. That's all you gotta do. I mean, I feel like in real life in the world bro it's it's about who you know out here hell yeah you know you could be the smartest motherfucker but if you don't have those connections bro right it's gonna be hard you got it you got to talk bro yeah can't be bro i don't want to talk to niggas bro i'm not a people person uh i got anxiety nigga everybody has anxiety bro yeah you just gotta get high <laughs> <laughs> and if you and if you start like chipping more high and you can't really do shit like you said bro just don't be high yeah I feel like you you build it up in your head like it's gonna be worse than it really is, you know. Like whenever like you do shit, mm -hmm. you'll be thinking like, oh fuck, I'm gonna fuck up, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna Hell do that. Yeah. But then you start actually doing it, and you're just like, and it's not even that bad. It's not bad, bro. Hell yeah, bro. I that's, ain't die from it. Like that's yeah. like autumn uh, when you were a kid and you didn't want to do shit, you didn't want to go to your grandma's house. Some others said you want to stay home, play the game. What when you had to go and you went. And you realized you were back home like two hours later. The shit wasn't Chilling. that bad. Exactly. It wasn't that bad. So that's just how you gotta live life, bro. So you, you know, you make music. You're in the entertainment scene. There's a lot of hate that also comes with it. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with the hate? Have you gotten hate um, when of it course. came to your music? I um, just, I just send purple hearts. <laughs> that's all you do. Has there been any, any, you know, face to face like, man, fuck your music or something like that or? Nah. Not directly. No. Damn. Mm -mm. That's good, though. But I feel like the the bigger that you get, you know, naturally the hate also grows with of it. Of course that shit gonna come. I can I already see what niggas... So much auto-tune. <laughs> Man, that shit, bro. That shit, auto-tune is a fucking gift, bro. Like, not everybody can use auto-tune, bro. You really can't, bro, because some niggas... You really have to make the note out for it to sound good. Like, yeah. You can't just get on that shit and just say shit. Yeah, if you suck, it's just gonna you just if you if you're you just suck, gonna suck with auto tune. <laughs> right, right, right. Like, and then you know I hear so much music every day, and it's like, yeah, auto tune, auto tune, auto tune. What would you say is the biggest misconception of who? of you? Whenever people either you know they hear your music, they see you. What's the first thing they be? You know, misconception about you. In reality, it's something else. You know. Um. They think, oh no, I've yeah. never ran into that. That's dope. That's dope. I've never ran. I, I'm not even going to cap, bro. Yeah, for me, I bro, sometimes it'd be like, they think, like, you know, I'll be like, too, nah, nah, fuck your, fuck your shit and stuff like that, bro. For real? But for me, it's like, bro, come on with it, with the music, come on with, with everything. Like, oh, God. you know, they feel like I, I won't take the time to even, like, you know, fuck with this shit. That's crazy. But, you know, that's, that's something you don't know until you actually start asking or start doing it, stuff like that. Hell yeah. Uh, where do you see yourself five years from now? <laughs> Damn it, <baby. laughs> Bruh, I'm not gonna lie, this may sound bad, bro, but mm. I don't live, I, I don't look to like, I don't think ahead, bro. I try not to really think at all, bro. Mm. I'm more of a doer, like, Day by day. Yeah, so I just live like day by day. Mm. Do you have any any goals you want to accomplish within that time span, or? Bro, I want to I want to be a millionaire tomorrow. <laughs> ah, there we go. There we go. <laughs> but you know you got to put in the work, which I do and I have. I still will. But you feel me? Anything that can, like, I had to learn like the quickest way isn't the best way. Which is why niggas get scammed. That shit ain't real, bro. Like, if you see a something or, like, like, if that shit just 
sounds crazy and it's ha- trying to happen so fast and so quick, it's either a really bad catch, bro, or that shit's not real. So yeah, you got to know when to think sometimes, which I still don't do. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, I don't know, bro. I just, I just be, I just be waking up, bro, and just doing shit. Mm. That's what I do every day, bro. You know, it's days you don't do too much. I just be chilling, bro. I chill my life away, bro. That's dope, man. And it's funny because, like, that's one of the major lessons that they teach about, like, mindfulness and just, like, living in the present. You know, lots of people, they either stress about the past, stress about the future. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you just need to take it day by day because, if you, like you said, if you make the right moves, you put in the work, and everything just start falling falling into place yeah. so that that's a good way of seeing it because lots of motherfuckers that be like bro i want a grammy in five uh. years type shit but it's like you have to make sure that you make the steps to get you to that point and like you said sometimes it could even be earlier than five years from now for real uh what really separate separates you from every uh, every other artist out here trying to make it because it seems like now eh, so many artists are coming up you know what what really separates you the the message I'm giving, um, we all 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 of us rappers talk about the same shit, but I just do and express myself different ways. Like, like as far as like, um, I try to I play around with the melodies and shit, and I don't really think anybody else is like making music like mine is because it's like so raw sometimes i don't mix sometimes i do mix Mm. um that's just just different bro it's some i don't sound like every other nigga either bro like we all use auto-tune but you know there's different ways you can use auto-tune it's not just one way so that's so true we saw t-pain we saw future it's two different ways bro that nigga t-pain is a goat that's just crazy who, who would you say are three artists that you would love to uh, make a song with once you get to that point of, like, you're established, you, you're out here, like, you know, because lots of big artists, bro, it's hard for them to get a feature with the up-and-coming up artists. Um, but three artists that you would love to make a song with. Um, uh, fuck, fuck, fuck. Kanye. Oh, that boy, yay. Um, Marilyn Manson. Oh, yeah. And... Some some hard shit. Of course, Cardi. Of course, <laughs> Cardi. I thought I thought you weren't going to put him, bro. I, I had gonna... to, bro. I had to. I thought you were going to see Cardi first, low-key. I should have, bro. <laughs> <laughs> What what do you see so much in in Kanye and and Marilyn Manson as as like artistic wise? You know why are they so so different to you, or in, or why do you why would you want to work with them? Kanye is smart as fuck, bro. Mm-hmm. That nigga do not lie, bro. Nigga says whatever he wants. Nigga, did you see his concert? <laughs> that Hell fuck. yeah, bro. That nigga was flying, bro. Bro, he killed it. That nigga is a goat, bro. He's just a goat. And then Cardi. Bro, Cardi, after yeah. he dropped whole lot of red, bro, I had an ego death, nigga, mm. and my music had sounded different. Mm. Not, I got, I got major influence from Cardi, bro. Yeah, that's what made. I feel me, like both of y'all would make a killer track, bro. Bro, like, bro, that shit would be so crazy. Shit, if anything, you gotta get them on the EP, bro. You gotta be like, hey, we gotta make a whole. A whole mixtape, a whole EP, bro. On God. <laughs> Not just a song. On God. For real. Nah, but that's dope. And it's funny because Kanye, bro, like, I feel like, like, like you said, lots of people don't understand what he's saying and doing till years after. Like, right. you know, two, three years later, they're like, oh, this is what the fuck he was talking about. Hell this yeah. is what he said with this. Um, and that's that's the genius of it. Like, we don't understand it until, like, Oh shit! This motherfucker Hell was really yeah. out here moving. Niggas gotta wake up. Hell yeah! So once it's all said and done, what is the legacy you want to leave behind? It's okay to be different, and it's okay to be 
sad and it's okay to be um it's just weird bro all that it's okay to be different bro like different is fire like just people just trying to be if you're trying to be something like just make sure that that's something like is relatable to you like just don't change everything just to be something like nah that's not you bro like nah so just basically be yourself bro and if you want to make music criticism don't don't get mad about criticism but you need criticism bro if nobody's telling you that that's just hard or ass like get them niggas from around you bro because not every song you're gonna make is a hit bro not every song you're gonna make is gonna be good bro i can't imagine how many throwaways he has bro i don't know that nigga's fire though but it's all part of the the game you know Hell yeah. It comes with it, like you said, criticism. Um, you know, sometimes you think the record's gonna blow up and it doesn't. Hell yeah! And all that stuff is just part of the game, and you gotta be ready for it. Cause Hell it, yeah! Not everybody's built for it. Right. Oh God, that's because that shit is some shit, bro. <laughs> it's some shit. Hell yeah! So how could the people reach you? Where could they contact you? Where could they stream you? You know, how could they find you? What's all that that good stuff, bro? You can find all my music on all platforms. A little scissor hands, a little space scissor hands. Um, my Instagram, bro. What is my Instagram? Mm? Oh no, I got hacked. Um, um, damn. What is my Instagram? Just type in a little scissor hands on Instagram. I'll pop up. Um, we'll, we'll tag it down below too. All right, guys. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, get notified whenever we drop new content. And we out. Peace.